Are we live? Oh boy. Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming to the Amnesia Fortnite final projects announcement. We're going to be announcing three out of our top ten finalists becoming projects, plus we're going to be picking Pendleton Ward's game that he is making. So please first say hi to Pendleton Ward. Pendleton Woo! Ward, hi! <laughs> Welcome to Double Fine. Usually when someone's new to Double Fine, we ask them three questions, but I, we don't want to, I won't make you guys sit through that, because everyone wants to know who the top three finalists are. No, no, we want to hear the three questions. We, it's questions. probably already out on the internet, so we what better announce this right now. Finalist? What? We can ask them, what is the first finalist? Yeah. <laughs> Man, some, some things, interesting things have happened. Okay. <laughs> Somehow managed to skip the ten finalists and land in the number one spot. All right. First finalist is Derek Brand's mnemonic. Where are you, Derek Brand? Where is he? There, come on up here. Derek Brand's mnemonic. High five, Ing. Congratulations, young man. Stay right here. You are really popular. I guess so. I've got to start being nicer to you. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Brand. Um, next up, Anna Kipnis, dear leader. Yay! 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 Good job. Look at that standing ovation. Look at that. It's amazing. <clears throat> yeah. I thought Derek was popular, but you got a two-man standing ovation. Yeah. So that's pretty good. <laughs> Let's see what happens for. I'm not familiar with this one. No? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. John Bernhelm, Steed. <laughs> Steed. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I brought props. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> nice one. So, uh, congratulations to you guys. Yeah, horse on head, that's nice. I can see where this whole project is going. There are so many other great in the top 10, uh, so many other great things, and um, I really want to thank everyone in the top 10 and everyone who pitched because it's such a traumatic thing to go through, I know, and, and um, it's uh, at least we can sigh a relief now. We, it's all known what's going to be happening, and so one more big hand to everyone in the top 10, everyone who voted and everyone who pitched. So, yeah. Yeah, there were a lot of votes and a lot of things that happened in the last minute. There were very, uh, just, well, I don't know the last minute. I haven't been watching, so. Uh, we'll reveal some stuff about the actual data later. I think, that, I think that it was very exciting, and it didn't stabilize right away, and so no. we didn't know. We didn't know <laughs> until the end, and it was very close. Yeah. So um, what we're going to do now is, you guys have all your PowerPoints right now. I'm kidding. Tomorrow, <laughs> we are going to be um, having an in-depth look at all these, these three games, and, it, oh, I forgot to talk about Penn's game. Yeah, and Penn's game. Um, tomorrow, at, so tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. right here, we're going to have you guys go in depth about your games, more like 10 or 15 minutes for each game. Are we going to be there, or we don't have to show up until 11, right? They'll be here talking about them. They'll be here, yeah. If you don't care which one you, you already know which one you're working on. This is for you guys to figure out which game you want to request to work on. Because that's the next thing that happens for people who don't know, is that these guys are going to make a list of their ideal teams, the teams they need to make these games. You guys are also going to specify which is your ideal project to work on. And then we throw this all into one big, um, great Excel document that spits out the optimal thing, where everybody gets what they want. What? Random number generator. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, it's just my personal whims. Yeah, and, so um, I'll be sending out a form to everyone, Double Fine, to ask you what your preferences are. Uh, and you have to say first, second, third or fourth for all of the games, and then we take all of that information. I'm going to send it out right after this, uh, and you can answer right away if you know right away, or you can hold off to see more from the project leads tomorrow. We still have some okay. about games. Now, for the special guest slot, the winning game is by Pendleton Ward. Pendleton Ward, everybody. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> and the internet has voted what for Little Pink Best Buds. 
So, it was crazy. If you watched our live stream, we couldn't pick a favorite even among the two of us. We just didn't know, but we're secretly very excited about that one, and I'm a little terrified of that one. So it should be exciting. <laughs> Me so too. also tomorrow at 10.30, you'll be one of the project leaders who is giving a more in-depth look and answering a Q&A with all you guys to find out what projects, and you guys will take in all that information and then decide which game you want to work on, right? So that's tomorrow, 10 a.m., and then there's nothing really else to talk about in this meeting, is there? Okay, so thanks everybody, and see you tomorrow at 10.30. I mean, you still have to stay here to work. But anyway. Bye. Congratulations. Crazy. And dear leader, you play a despotic ruler of a republic just emerged from revolution. The game will have you making decisions to industrialize, censor the press, execute ministers you mistrust, and of course, see to you and yours. It's a political satire inspired by Dr. Strangelove, games like Papers, Please and Cart Life, and the visual style of early Soviet propaganda. The story of your republic will emerge based on the decisions you make. And remember, you cannot make a revolution with silk gloves. Anna Kipnis, you're here, I assume, to talk about Bad Golf 3? Yes. I hear you gave up your spot with your leader to Bad Golf. <laughs> is that true? It, no. No. <laughs> you're like, nope. Sorry, Patrick. Um, Patrick does understand marketing, though. Here we are. Yeah, he yeah. didn't get picked, and we're still Bad talking Golf about his game. Bad Golf 3, guys. Genius. Vote in 2015. 15. Oh, night. Okay. Um, oh, wait. I didn't even see that. Okay. So, um, dear leader, obviously based on your life, um, <laughs> as a leader. As a leader, yeah. So, um, where did you get the idea for this game? Uh, that's a good question. So, I really love uh, the kind of like kind of. I don't really know what the genre of those games mm -hmm. is really, but Papers Please and Cart Life, like that kind of uh, genre where the story is um, sort of like the narrative is sort of emergent. Um, the actual gameplay is kind of a simulation. Mm -hmm but you um, like a story develops over the course of it mm. um, and I thought uh, also that um, I think with Papers, Please people were really excited about playing a character that like ultimately had no control over their you know what, what was happening to them mm. um, but I think it would be also really interesting to do um, to do something where you actually have you you are controlling the despot and to see yeah. like what limitations there are of that. So and, would you um, be able to be like a totally benevolent leader if you wanted to be? I suppose you could be, but you would be quite challenged in that, mm -hmm. in that regard. Like it would be really tricky to navigate those waters. So you're going to have to get your hands a little dirty uh, to be successful? Potentially, potentially. And then can you go the other side and be the worst leader of all time yes. and kill everybody? But at the same time, I want it to be like <coughs> sort of like I want sort of the tragedy of what you've done to also be apparent at the end. So I, it's, it's a satire. I want it to be really funny. I want it to be like, <laughs> I want it to be so you're gonna tongue set in the, cheek, but. The, all the dead people in a real <laughs> funny way. Well, yeah. It's going to be like hilarious. Like in embarrassing yeah. positions when they died like that? Well, no, no. More like just I want it to be kind of a dark comedy, I guess. Yeah. It's, yeah, I could get that from the pitch a little bit. So what kind of yeah. choices are you making when you're the player mostly? Like, is it just, um, are, you, are you navigating between two unwinnable positions, or is there some way that you actually can, um, like, what is, the, is there a win condition, or is it really not about winning at it? It's, okay, so basically what you're, what you're doing is you're making decisions that kind of change the character of the nation. And then you also have your internal cabinet, and there are people there that um, you don't necessarily trust or shouldn't trust, and that'll become apparent. Mm -hmm. Spoilers. Uh, and... Uh, Essentially, it's like just got, it's kind of this this balancing act between the personal and like the um, and the good of the country, if you will. So you're gonna be a specific character with a name, like your your dictator is a special. No, you're you? kind of yourself. Like I'm gonna mm -hmm. do I'm gonna do as much as I can to actually make the player feel like, n they like are that they can you know kind of yeah. enact like that that that's their character. Like but are you gonna get into his personal life or his or her personal? Yeah, life? I suppose there's gonna be a little bit of. Uh, yeah, you're going to have family and things like that, and it's going to come up. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess to, I, as close as I can get, I want the player to feel like it's they're playing, you know, like this is what would happen if they were to take up this, this sort of, you know, mm -hmm. position in the world. But um, there is, like, I guess what I'm saying is that I want the player to be able to bring something of themselves into the game, even though the, player, the character that they're playing is going to probably have an established story of some kind, like family and th things like that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds awesome.
That's Sounds great. great. Do you have anything you'd like to say to people about? Um, uh, I wanted to thank everyone for voting and um, yeah, I guess voting again. Awesome. If Good they luck. Want to do that. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Congratulations, Santa. Yay. <laughs>
Instead, you play as a horse for hire, saddled with the job of picking up bumbling heroes, hoofing them across a storybook landscape, and ensuring they don't die on their quests. You'll form a special bond with an awkward stable boy, uncover a dark plot, and together you'll break free from the reins of a corrupt order. Steed aims to turn the hero with a horse trope on its head with a charming double fine take on a classic partnership. Let's bring down John Bernhelm. Do you uh, want to thank the horse community for the equestrians, the equine lovers, equine lovers of America, America. for supporting this crazy game. Now, when I was talking about this game before, the only puzzle ideas I came up with involved killing the guy who was on your back. But is yeah, that that's not where you're game. going with this game? That's the sequel where you have like an evil twin brother Bad horse Steed that, too. you know, is, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, the need for Steed. Um, oh, nice. Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm oh. sorry, I believe you're disqualified oh. now. Oh, oh man, that's I bad. crossed the no pun crossed boundary. The pun boundary. Oh. I hate All right, that one. now, yeah. are there any cats in your game? Um, no. So what kind of so what controls do you have? Like standard horse controls, so, driving, so, neighing. It's so one thing that you know our, the pitch didn't actually show off. That this is um, envisioned as a third person, you know, three D kind of open world ish game. Mm. So I've um, been playing a lot of Shadow of the Colossus to kind of like see how they built their kind of animation set for their their horse, and just looking at that one, that's one of my favorite uh, games where you, you get to ride a horse. But mm. the thing is, every game where you ride a horse, you are a character on top of this thing, and mm. they there's always lag within the controller with the mm. controls because it's about you know, me directing this creature that is then moving. And um, one of the things I'd want to, you know, explore in Steed is if you actually are the creature, especially, you know, horses are really agile. They can do a lot of stuff. There's awesome movies on, on YouTube that I've seen. I didn't realize that horses could jump in the air and, like, pile drive somebody. It's amazing. Do they there are want, videos of do this. Do horses do this on They purpose? can do this. Well, you know, looking, I was looking up some interesting videos of horses kicking people off or throwing people off. And yeah. uh, I don't know. They're nuts. They're awesome. Um, so you're a wrestler and a horse. A wrestler and a horse. You got a lucha libre mask. But, Do you have uh, an idea for the like a story that this horse is involved in? Yes. So um, I actually, gotta, you know, we'll see how, how much we can get going into this. But uh, the idea is that in this peaceful village, relatively peaceful village, it's just kind of this normal kind of storybook fantasy land. Um, a group of a a uh, entrepreneur has discovered that he has the ability to understand horse speak. He's mm -hmm. a horse hearer. Um, not a whisper, he just can mm -hmm. hear them. And, horse and he realizes that the horses actually can understand people. They always have been able to. It's just that people have had this weird relationship where they're controlling them, they're beasts of burden. And he decides that he's going to create this company, this guild of free horses that basically become like Lyft or Uber. Like now the horses <laughs> can go out, they don't need to be owned by anybody, they don't need to have you know, a bit and a controlling bridle. They basically can go around, pick up heroes, take the heroes where they want them to go, help them with their quests, get paid for it. Wait, buy wait, better wait. stables. This is Crazy Taxi. So You're making a horse-based Crazy Taxi. A little bit. A okay. little bit. All right. uh, at least that's how it starts. Mm -hmm. And so you are a horse to find yourself in this situation. You come to this town. You're like, wait, I don't need to be controlled by a human. I can actually you know, work with them. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's, you realize there's some darker things going afoot. And at the same time, you find out that um, the stable boy that's helping you out is also one of these horse hearers. It's a really rare gift. And you kind of start using him to your advantage to figure out how you can manipulate kind of the human world. But then mm -hmm. you end up being uh, a partner with him to to save it. Do you run for president? You no, president? again sequels. You know, oh, okay, good. Look too. at your scope control. Um, Look at that, yeah. amazing. But uh, in terms of controls and stuff, we're thinking like um, being able to attack, uh, have basic melee combat uh, bidirectionally, so you can do stomps and kicks in the front and kicks in the back. Being able to throw, pick up a rider, yeah. put him on your back, throw them off. Mm -hmm. So if you have that drunken knight and you want to sober him up, you can run over to the pond and chuck him in for a second. Mm -hmm. um, Will you be using road apples as a weapon? Uh, apples are our food and energy <laughs> source, so they're not. Uh, I was just, uh, there's a question in our chat feed: uh, Will the horses poop? I I like the idea of having a some kind of a. Uh, stamina meter that may be tied to also <laughs> ev evacuation. I was queen. That wasn't in the chat. Uh, I just had that question. Okay. Myself. Maybe, you know, that's the thing. It's like one of the things I want to explore is what is it like to be this animal instead of to mm -hmm. be driving it yeah. um, and play with the idea of control. You know, what, mm -hmm. what it, who is in control at what time and who's controlling who, uh, either socially or physically through, you know, yanking on some reins and yeah. pulling a bit in a horse's mouth. Great. Awesome. Well, congratulations and cool. good luck. <laughs> Mr. John Bernhelm. I think we're done. I think that's all there is time for.